right, how's it going? So today we are looking at lead code number 225. It's a question called implement a stack using queues. Uh, they list this as an easy question, but I would definitely uh, classify this as a medium question. It is a, it is a bit tricky. Okay, so here we wanna implement a first, uh, last in, first out, LIFO stack using only two queues. The implemented stack should support all functions of a normal queue, push, pop, top, and empty. So here we have a my stack class. We're gonna have a push method that takes in a integer as the value. <clears throat> We're gonna have a pop method, a top method, and an empty method. Um, and we have some notes here. You must use only standard operations of a queue, which means only push to the back, peak, pop from front, size, is empty operations are valid. And depending on the language, the queue may not be supported uh, natively. So you may simulate a queue using a list or a deck, double-ended queue, as long as you use only a queue standard operations. Okay. So let's go in the conceptual here and let's take a look at this. So if we have two queues here, <clears throat> uh, let's just call this, we can just actually just use one queue to do this. So let's say we have the numbers one, two, three, and four. Here we're gonna have a queue. I'll just represent it this way. Queue here, okay. And we're gonna add in this one We'll add in this two, we'll add in this three, we'll add in this four, but we wanna do a stack operation where um, when we dequeue or when we remove from this, we actually wanna remove from the end. We wanna remove that four, three, two, and one, but we can only use the queue functionality. So to the way we wanna do this is, what we wanna do is, let's say we add one, okay? Now to dequeue this, it's simple. We can just take this off the queue. But let's say we add two. Well, all we have to do is we have to rotate this, okay? If we rotate these two numbers here, meaning that here we have one and two and we go ahead and change this to two and one, then when we can dequeue, we're actually dequeuing as if it were a stack, okay? Let's do one more uh, example of this. Let's say now I wanna add three. So I'm gonna add three and now I'm gonna rotate twice, okay? I'm gonna take this two and I'm gonna put it here, and I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna put it here, and now when I DQ this three, it's going to behave like a stack, okay? We'll just do one more just to make it clear. Let's say I add this four here to the end of the queue, and now I rotate three times, okay? So I'm gonna take this three, put it over here, take this two, put it over here, and take this one, put it over here. Now, all the elements in the queue here are gonna behave like a stack. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna remove from the front, but it's gonna be as if it were a stack, okay? So that's, that's the way we would go about this. What would be our time and space complexity? Well, our time complexity here, we're gonna have to do a rotation every time we remove from the queue. So it's going to be O of N uh, for every push operation. Okay, because every time we push onto the, the queue, we're going to have to rotate it. But the removal, so this is going to be push, for the pop, it'll be constant time, because all we're doing is dequeuing. And we can do that in constant time. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and jump to the code. I hope that makes sense. I think it'll make more sense once we start coding. Um, so with the queue, we, uh, unfortunately, we're gonna have to implement our own queue here. So we can just do a class node and we can do a constructor and then we'll just do a this.val. We'll have a val here and we'll do this.val equals val and then this.next is gonna equal null. Okay, so that'll be our, that'll be our node uh, for our queue class, and then we'll create a class. I'll call it my queue, and we'll also have a constructor here. And then for this queue class, we can just set um, this dot head to be null, this dot tail to be null, and then a this dot size to equal zero. 
Okay. And then with our my queue, we want an in queue method. Okay, we want a DQ method. And then we want an empty method. We also want a peak method. Let's do a peak as well. Okay, so with the queue, um, we'll just go ahead and implement on a queue. So we're going to have a node. We can have new node, and we'll set that to new node with a val. Okay, and now we want to check, is the size zero? Is the, is the queue that we currently have empty? So we can just do that by ch checking the size. So we can say, if this.size is null, then we want to set our head and our tail to that new node. So we want to say this.head equals new node, and this.tail equals new node. Else, if it's not empty, then what do we want to do? For in queue, we want to um, add it to the tail, add it to the end. Okay, so we can say this.tail.next is going to equal new node and then this.tail is going to equal new node. Okay, and lastly, what do we want to do? We just want to increment our size. So we can say this.size plus plus. And NQ will be void. It's not going to return anything. DQ, we will return something. So <clears throat> here, what do we want to do? We want to first check the case if the queue is empty. So if this.size is empty, then we just return null. Okay. And if it's not empty, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to return whatever's in the head. So let's just say let node equal this.head. And then this.head is going to equal this.head.next. Okay, so we're going to increment the head over. Uh, we can just go ahead and break the connection with a node. So we can just say node.next is going to equal null. Okay, and then we will also want to decrement the size. So we can say this.size is going to equal, um, is going to decrement. And then lastly, we just want to return the node value. So we can say, um, return node.val. Okay, so that'll take care of our DQ. Our peak method is just, we just want to return this.head.val. Okay, and then our empty is just, we just want to return this.size equals zero. Okay, so all we've done here is just the scaffolding. We haven't even gotten to the actual problem, but we've just set up our own queue class and our node class, and that's going to um, go ahead and make our life easier when we implement uh, our stack. So here we're going to have class my stack. Okay, and I'll go ahead and make a little bit of space down here so it's easier to see. And then we'll have a constructor. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to have a, a queue um, uh, variable here. So we'll say this dot Q is going to equal new my Q. Q U E U E. Okay, so instantiate a new Q, set it to this dot Q. And that's all we really have to do. I mean, I know they say using two Qs, but you can just do this with one. Um, and so what we're going to do now is just set up our methods here. Let me move this over one. Let's go ahead and move this over here. Okay, so now we're going to have a push. We'll have a val here. Okay, we're going to have a pop. And we're going to have a top. And we're going to have an empty. All right, so those are our methods here. And now we just want to fill these in. Okay, so with the push, this is where we have to figure out and do some work. Okay, so we want to push into the stack. What do we have to do? We have to rotate this queue every time we push. 
Okay, so how do we want to do this? We want to set a variable for rotate, how many times you want to rotate this. So we say let rotate, and we'll go ahead and set that to um, the size of the queue. So we can say this dot queue dot size. Okay, then we want to add that value to the queue. We want to enqueue it on there. So we can say this dot queue dot enqueue the value okay and now we want to rotate the queue uh, the, the as many times as the previous size okay so we just want to create a while loop here and set it to rotate while rotate is true so while we have a number there and then what we're going to do is we are going to enqueue and dequeue at the same time. So this sounds a little confusing, but it'll make more sense once I write the code. So we're going to say this dot queue dot dequeue. I'm sorry, enqueue. And we're going to say this dot queue dot dequeue. So what we're doing here is we're just rotating this. Okay. So like, let's say we get. Let's say we have, um, we added one to the queue, right? We're not gonna do anything because the size was zero. Now we're gonna add two, okay? So now we're going to uh, get the size of it, which is one, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the two. So we're gonna have one and two, and then we're gonna rotate it once. We're gonna take this end queue off the front and then go ahead and dequeue it on the back. And so our queue will now look like that, okay? When we add this three here, we're gonna go ahead and get the size first, which is two. Then we're gonna add the three, and then we're gonna rotate it two times, whatever the um, uh, size of that uh, previous variable was. So we're gonna go ahead and take this two and put it here and take this one and put it there. All right, so all we wanna do here is decrement rotate. And that's all we have to do for push. We're just going to, it returns void, so we're not returning anything. For pop, all we have to do now is DQ off of our queue. So we can just return. Well, we could have uh, some variable here to catch in case, uh, in case it's null, but I think we do that in the previous one. Yeah, if this size, this dot size is empty, then we return null. So here we can just do a return this dot Q dot DQ. Okay, our top is going to be also very easy. We'll just uh, return this dot q dot peak. Okay, and then our empty is just returning this dot q dot size, or I'm sorry, this dot q dot empty. Okay, and that's it. I know it's a lot of code, and that's why I, I said that this is more of a medium than an easy, because you gotta implement your own queue class, and node class, and then tie it into this stack class. So there's a lot going on, but if you go step by step, you can see that it's really, it's really not too bad. Let's go ahead and run that, make sure it works. Okay, and we're good. Uh, so time and space complexity, again, we went over this. Um, you can see that the push method is where we're really doing all the work. That's where we have to do this rotate, so that's linear. But everything else is just a constant time operation, so it's pretty good on time and space. Okay, so that is lead code number 225, implement a stack using queues. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.